Hey friends, thanks for joining. Welcome to Breville's Masterclass for how to dial in the Barista Touch Impress. I'm Matt Davis, product expert for Coffee with Breville. If you're tuning in for the live chat, feel free to ask questions throughout the class. We have a team of experts from Breville that are ready to answer your questions. If you're watching the on-demand version, feel free to ask your questions and send them to brevillebarista at brevillusa.com. I'm so excited to be here. Let's make some coffee. Now, in front of me, I have the Barista Touch Impress. Uh, this is the latest addition to our family of espresso machines, and I'm really excited about some key features that we'll talk about. But most importantly, today is all about understanding how to approach this machine on a day-to-day -day basis, and most importantly, how to troubleshoot. So dialing in is the process that we refer to when we talk about combining all the different variables that you need to take into consideration when making coffee and getting them all to line up just right to get the best outcome. Now, before we start making coffee, we need to load our hopper. So I'm gonna grab some coffee. Now, coffee is all about preference, right? So definitely choose a coffee that you love, but I really encourage everyone to try something different. Explore coffee and have fun with it. Now, I am using freshly roasted whole bean coffee. Now, that is really important, specifically the freshness part. Now. I'm using what's called a vacuum canister, which helps to keep the CO2 in and keep this, the oxygen out. Uh, oxygen is kind of the enemy here, and we want to keep our coffee fresh. And in order to do so, all that CO2 that naturally occurs when we roast coffee, the more that we can keep in, the more flavor we'll get out. So if you're shopping for coffee, just some quick sound bites for you. Look for coffee that has a roasted date, not a best buy or expiration date. What that does is it ensures you to know when the coffee was actually roasted, and that's when coffee starts to degas. So the date in which it was roasted is really important. So finding coffee that was roasted with about 30 days is a really great place to start. But if you don't have that right now, don't worry about it. Now, this machine has what's called a thermojet heating system, which is phenomenal. And the best part about it is I'm gonna be starting cold. So when I press power, this machine will start in about three seconds. So if you just spontaneously want a cappuccino in the afternoon, it's ideal. Now, when you first unbox this machine, it's going to encourage you to go through the coffee tutorial, which I highly encourage you to do. Uh, it's super helpful for just kind of getting your bearings and understanding everything this machine has to offer. However, we're gonna skip through that today, and I'm gonna show you what to do after that. So, a lot of you will have had this machine for a while. Maybe you just bought it today. But regardless, let's talk about the ongoing use of this machine. So. After you get this machine all calibrated, what I love to do is go into settings and use what's called the intelligent brew setup. This is really helpful if you change coffee beans or if something just doesn't look right, the intelligent brew will really help calibrate your machine to get the absolute best extraction without you having to like troubleshoot all day and waste a ton of coffee, which no one wants to do. Now, going through the intelligent brew setup will mean pulling a few shots, but not nearly as many if you didn't have this guidance. This is what we call the barista guidance system. Really, really amazing. So what you'll need is obviously some fresh coffee, your machine, and something that I love to put emphasis on when you set up your home coffee bar are some towels. Now, I use microfiber rags, but whatever you have works great. I like to have two. One that I keep dry for cleaning out my portafilter. So dry and clean every time. And then another one that I reserve to keep slightly damp to wipe off my steam wand. So we'll keep that to the side. Now, let's get into it. The first question it's gonna ask you is what kind of coffee you're using. This is really important because if you've spent any time with this machine, you will have noticed you get a few accessories with it. This prompt specifically targets helping you understand which basket to use. So let's answer this question and then talk about the baskets. I'm using coffee roasted within 30 days. The alternative would be anything else, whether it has a roast date, but it was 
longer than 30 days ago, or let's say it has a best buy date or something else. You would choose the other selection. So I'm going roasted within 30 days, meaning it's fresh coffee. Now, it's telling me to use the single wall filter basket. Well, first off, you need to understand which one's which. Now, if I pull out my basket selection, I actually like to use another basket as a leverage tool to pop out the other basket. It's just an easy way to make that happen. Now, this machine comes standard with the pressurized basket. So we'll talk about the key difference because the way to identify them is if you look on the inside, you'll notice they look very similar. However, when you turn them upside down, you'll notice that the bottom side is where the difference really comes clear. The single wall filter is the same front and back. You see the same hole structure. If I hold it up to light, I'd be able to see directly through those holes. However, the dual wall basket has this additional layer of metal blocking off most of those holes. So essentially what the dual wall basket or pressurized basket does is it helps to engineer back pressure. Now, the main reason that is is because when we're making espresso, our job as the barista is to control the variables of grind size to help hold back or restrict the flow of water moving through the coffee. That's really important because you're taking water and forcing it through a little bit of coffee with nine bars of atmospheric pressure. It's a lot. It's really intense. Now, if the coffee finds a path of least resistance, it's going to push through really quickly, which means the water doesn't spend enough time with the coffee, thus having a under extracted shot of espresso, which equals no good. We don't want that. Now, the only way to fix it is to change your grind size to be more fine, which helps hold back or restrict that water flow. But if you're using coffee that was either pre-ground, meaning you can't change the grind size, or coffee that wasn't fresh, that coffee is not going to be very good at holding the water back. So the pressurized basket kind of acts as a little bit of a tool to help engineer back pressure. So if you're having a really hard time holding the water back, switch to the pressurized basket and that should do the trick. Okay, so that kind of helps understand the key difference between the two baskets. And then the other one is just the absolute size difference, which is a little bit more obvious. But when do you use one or the other? Well, I always use the same size basket regardless because I like to maintain the same recipe of how much coffee to how much water. The other basket would be simply using less coffee with any given amount of water. So if you wanted to only use a single basket, go for it. You have the same options of pressurized versus non-pressurized. So single versus dual wall. So we're going to be sticking to the dual wall basket with the single wall style, okay? Now we can put our accessories bin back where it goes. This is where you're gonna keep all your cleaning supplies really conveniently. All right, push that back away, boom. Okay, now simply just push the basket into the porta filter until you hear it click. All right, so now let's look back at the screen and see what the next step is. So now it's going to tell us to leave our grinder at your current setting, if unsure, set to number 15 now. So the machine wants us to change the grind setting to 15 or where you currently have it. Next setting is going to be going through and actually grinding coffee. So we're gonna take our porta filter, insert it into the cradle, and I'm actually going to remove this cover here so that we can see what's going on behind the scenes. Now that the porta filter is in, you'll notice that the screen actually changes the way that the animation is either lit or not. So it knows that the porta filter has been engaged. So once it's in, the full color will come up and then that's your prompt to push the picture, okay? So just tap on the picture of the porta filter basket.
right, so the way that this grinder works is that it's connected to a timer. That timer system is simply there to help dictate how much coffee ends up in the portafilter, right? So if I grind for 10 seconds versus 20 seconds, I'll have more or less coffee. Now, what the machine doesn't know is how much of this coffee can pass through that grinder in any given amount of time because the more or less a coffee has been roasted, the more dense or brittle it becomes, which dictates how quickly it moves through that grinder. So depending on the coffee that you're using, you'll need to calibrate the grinder. Now let's figure out what we ended up with. It's going to now tell you to pull down on the tamp lever. The cool thing about this is that tamp lever is tied to the computer that can actually sense the depth of the coffee in the portafilter. So once that tamp comes down, and you can watch it through this sight glass here, that's what's reading back to the system to tell us if we have enough, too much, or not enough coffee. If you have the right amount, you'll get a green line right in the middle. The green light will tell you that you have the correct tamp height, which means you have the right dose level. Your dose is just the amount of coffee. So now we have a puck of coffee that has been perfectly dosed and tamped. We can now move it over to the group head. Following the prompts on the screen, it tells you to insert the portafilter and then tap the button. Now we're just going to put a vessel underneath the spouts and the machine does the rest for you. This part's amazing. What's happening right now is the machine is reading two different things how quickly the water is able to pass through the coffee and how long it takes for a certain volume to finish passing through. Those two data points is what the machine uses to dictate whether or not your machine has the right grind size adjustment. So it really does play barista for you, which makes our job really easy. So again, anytime you're changing coffee, or even if you're using the same coffee but refilling the hopper, I would highly recommend going through the Intelligent Brew setup. Okay, it says that this was too slow. That pour might taste bitter or sour. Do you prefer your coffee this way? Now, you could taste this and be perfectly happy with it and just keep it. However, if you're not happy with it, you can say try again and it will walk you through what change to make and then test that to see if we're on the money. So let's say try again. Now, normally when you're dialing in coffee, you're kind of guessing <laughs> what grind size you're going to change and hope for the best. And it can be pretty frustrating if I'm honest, and it takes a lot of practice to kind of get a hang of it. The Intelligent Brew system actually tells you what grind size you need to change to. So it's telling me to change it to grind size 18. Now remember before we were at 15. So on the left side of the machine, we're going to go up to grind size 18 and then try that and then we'll go from there. And again, this could, this could take a few rounds, but ultimately we should get there pretty quickly. It does tell you to knock out your portafilter. So again, having a knock box is a really great tool. Otherwise your waste basket works fine too but it's just a convenient way to clear out your portafilter each time. So now we would just go back. We're at grind size 18. We're just gonna run one more shot, see what we get. Now, anytime you change a grind size, be aware that it might change your calibration of your dose because coffee is able to pass through more quickly if those burrs are closer or further apart from each other. So we're gonna go back and do the tamping, and this is going to allow the system to read that depth. It's now saying that we don't have enough coffee, so we're gonna add more. And the machine is gonna do this over and over again until it calibrates itself to get to the proper dose. All right, still saying that we need to add more. And once we get to the ideal dose, it will remember it for the next round. There we go. 
So now, the next time I go to make a shot of espresso, it'll get the dose right the first time. Go to the next screen and start brewing our shot. And again, the machine is now talking to itself. It's measuring the time it takes for a set volume of water to pass through that coffee. And we changed our grind size to be more coarse, which allows the water to pass through more quickly. It's less resistance. All right, so now it's saying that is an ideal pour. It used all those data points to figure out whether or not this shot of espresso looked the way that we programmed it to ideally end up. So we end up with a shot of two ounces. So this is a volumetric machine, meaning it automatically turns off when a set volume of water passes through that coffee. Makes our job super easy. And then it has the metrics in there to say, if two ounces passes through before or after a time frame, then it's going to suggest you to make a change. Now, I always recommend, regardless of the outcome, taste your coffee. Okay, so this is one that it said was a little bit too slow. And this one was ideal. Wow, immediately noticed the difference. This one's a little bit more on the sour side. Not terrible, but it helps me really see the potential of any given coffee that I have. I can make one coffee taste 20 different ways just based on changing the grind size to change the amount of time the water spins with it. It's pretty cool. So that, my friends, is dialing in. You can do it manually on another product, or you can use this product and it'll walk you through and you get to your ideal cup much faster. <laughs> uh, I'm a little jealous of this because I spent more than 15 years doing this manually and it takes a long time to figure out. Mm. It's just so much sweeter. I love that. Okay. Hopefully at home you're having success going through the same thing. You might need more than just two rounds to get to it, but either way, have fun with it. All done. All right, so now it's gonna bring me back to my home screen. Now at this point, I can just choose any beverage that I would like to make. And what we've done is we've input kind of default settings to help you craft that beverage really quickly without you having to do all the research of what differentiates all these different beverages. Right? So choose the vessel that you like. Choose the beverage that you're more drawn to. Let's go with a latte. And it's going to walk us through all of those steps separately. So again, we're going to get rid of that puck. We're going to wipe our portafilter. And we're going to go through that entire process. Now, for the sake of time, we already pulled our shot of espresso, so we're going to jump ahead to talking about milk. Because once we have coffee done, whew, your life is so much easier. You have now created the base of all of these beverages. So I could take this shot of espresso and turn it into a macchiato, a cortado, a cappuccino, a latte, a mocha, whatever. Really get creative. You can make it iced, you can make it hot, or you could just add hot water to it and make a long black or an Americano. So whatever your preference is, you now have where it all begins. So I'm gonna put the razor tool back up here. We're going to make a latte. I'm going to use this shot of espresso because it is, it is a very good shot of espresso. And even though the temperature might drop, the quality doesn't change. So don't let anyone fool you about a shot of espresso dying. It doesn't happen. Okay, I am going to grab some milk and talk to you about another one of the key features of this machine. So this machine automatically steams milk. So first off, that's amazing. Steaming milk is one of the hardest parts of making a milk-based beverage. Like getting the espresso takes some time, but once you have it, you're pumping them out, right? Steaming milk manually, the technique is just very tedious and it's very finicky. A small little mistake and you ruin your batch of milk and that's just like very frustrating, especially if it's like 6 a.m. and you just woke up. So 
This machine takes care of all that for you. It's hands-free. I can pull my shot of espresso. I can start steaming my milk. I can go make my toast. I can come back, and it's, it's, all just, it's done. It's, it's magical. Nothing short of magical. The only thing I need is my milk of choice and my steaming pitcher. Now, another important part about this machine is it takes into consideration that you may choose dairy milk or you may choose oat milk or almond milk. Regardless of what kind of milk you're using, this machine has been given the ability to treat and steam different ingredients uniquely. Uh, and that's a really big deal because when it comes to steaming milk, as I said, the technique is just really crazy. But every different ingredient has to be treated slightly different. So I'm gonna be using oat milk today. So on the side of my pitcher, I actually have a couple little markings here to help make sure that I have the right amount of milk first. So I'm going to fill that just right in between the two, almost right up to the top line there. And all I need to do is take my jug and make sure that I have it centered on this little dot here, which is, in, uh, this is a temperature sensor. So make sure that your jug is on top of that sensor. As long as it's coming into contact with it, it will work. What that sensor is doing is it's measuring the temperature of that milk jug because you can actually tell the machine how hot you would like your milk and it will automatically turn off once it gets to that temperature. But there's more to steaming milk than just temperature. You're also introducing air and that's actually the hardest part about doing it manually. So if I click on the milk settings below that picture of milk, it'll open up my menu setting for milk and I can choose my froth level. And again, depending on what drink I select, the default setting will change based on what we recommend. You can absolutely change it. And if you do, it'll actually give you the option to save that change. So let's say I want to go to froth setting five, okay? I then also need to change my milk type. So right now it's on dairy. I'm going to choose oat. You could also choose almond or soy. Okay, once you have oat chosen, you can choose your milk temperature. Right now it's on 140. That sounds good to me. And all I need to do is touch this picture of the milk and it will start steaming. Now, this happens all hands-free. And what's happening is the system is actually pulling air out of the environment and pushing it directly into the body of the milk so that you don't have to manually do so. And it's changing it based on all of those different settings that you just selected. So I could walk away, I could go do anything that I wanted and I could come back and the milk would be ready and all I have to do is pour it. <coughs> Now, as soon as I make any changes within this screen, you'll notice a little icon will appear that looks like a floppy disk. If I were to press that disk, it would allow me to save this drink so that next time I wanted it to be exactly the same, I wouldn't have to go back and change everything. So that's really helpful. All right, I can hear it slowing down. Now, before I do anything, I'm going to pull the jug out and immediately wipe down the steam wand. This is really important. This is a cool touch steam wand, so the steam wand does not get hot, very helpful. And I need to make sure that I push it back down because it's going to automatically clean itself, as you'll see here. It's just gonna push through some hot water to make sure no milk residue is left inside that steam wand. Preventative maintenance is extremely important when taking care of an espresso machine, and this one kind of does it all for you. All right, so now I have my milk, I have my coffee. Now all I have to do is pour it. Don't over obsess the technique of pouring. Latte art will come, don't worry. But what you're going to do is you're going to tilt your cup a little bit, start a little bit with the distance, and then slowly get really close and then increase your pour speed. All right, and then you'll be able to just pour something as simple as a heart, 
You can start making it more and more complicated over time. But what's really important is that you're ending up with the right texture. So the impress puck system, the milk IQ, all of that stuff put together gives you all the control that you need without having to have all the pra practice and uh, experience beforehand. So this would be a latte. I customized it. So now I could actually come back into the screen, select this save icon, select that, and all those changes that I just made will now be saved for next time. So I don't have to do that each and every time. Give it a name. I can select whatever picture I would like. And now moving forward, each time I want that same drink, instead of having to go into Latte and make adjustments, I can just select my drink and everything's saved. So really easy, super fast. And that pretty much wraps up the whole workflow of dialing in, steaming your milk, and then pouring your beverage to construct an actual beverage. Thank you so much for joining. I had a blast. I hope you did too. We'll see you next time.